I study coastal restoration through the lens of biogeochemistry. That means I study how restoration of coastal marshes works by looking at the chemistry that relates the plants, animals, water, and soil. This is a really interesting area to work in because there's a lot to learn. Since the globe is warming and the climate is changing, sea levels have started to rise. That water level rise and changes in global circulation patterns means that our coastlines are about to have more intense storms. About 40% of the world's population lives within 100 kilometers of the coast, so understanding what is going to get impacted first and how we can protect those communities that live there starts with protecting the coastlines and the natural features. This is where restoration comes in. There are lots of ways to restore coastal marshes, but why should we restore the marshes instead of building a big wall? Well, one, people would be upset that they can't see the ocean anymore. And two, marshes provide lots of ecosystem services, such as protection from storm surge, improving water quality, and being habitat for birds and fish. And people love them. Fishing, kayaking, birding, these are all services that marshes provide. My team and I take soil, water, and gas samples to understand how the marsh recovers once it's been restored. We use water samples to look at how many nutrients are available, which plants will need as they grow in the restored area. The water samples are analyzed on a bunch of different equipment in our lab, including a benchtop pH meter and a Thermo Fisher Gallery Plus. We use the gas samples to look at the fluxes of greenhouse gases that are coming off of the marsh as a result of being disturbed by the restoration. We analyze gas samples on different pieces of equipment, such as a gas chromatograph and a Picaro, which looks at the isotopes in the gas. We partner with state and federal agencies on many projects, working together to understand and restore marshes across the state. The people we work with have all sorts of experience, from working with animals, to working with people, to research. And you don't need a PhD to do science for a living. Science is for everyone who asks questions about the world around them and wants to find those answers. I didn't always know that I wanted to study the coastlines. When I was in high school, I took an environmental science class that really made me interested in the environment, but I didn't even know that I could be a coastal scientist. I'd only ever heard of Jane Goodall working with chimps, or imagined scientists mixing chemicals in labs. So I tried a lot of things before I settled on coastal systems. Microbiology and E. coli, limnology or lake science, water quality policy with the Connecticut Department of Public Health, computer coding and modeling, nutrient contamination with the EPA. I learned a lot along the way, especially that you don't need to go to grad school in order to get your scientific dreams to come true. That was the path that I took, but I work with so many people who found their own way. It may take time and effort, but you can do anything if you put your mind to it.